G'day folks. Well, it's Television Thursday. I got a visit from Jay the Aussie last night and uh, he left me with another six or five or six uh, flat panel displays, LCDs this time. So I got this TCL one, there's two Toyota ones, a Samsung, and there's another one inside which you saw in the last update video I had running. Uh, I think Dad's going to use that as a computer monitor. Uh, he's always wanted to play games on a big screen, so I hope he sets it all up and uses it. Uh, my 40 inch is still going pretty strong, so I don't need it at the moment, but it's a really nice to have one. Even though the tuner and everything doesn't work, it's nice to have one that just works as a good display monitor. So that one's inside, and the rest of these, well, all three of those have smashed panels. So I can't even make a good one out of the two of these uh, Toyota brand ones. So both panels are broken, neither one of them wants to start up anyway. I think the power supplies are blown as well, or the backlight drivers or something like that. That one starts up and works, so despite the corrosion, the board's probably still okay. But this one here is the old ball out. Jay, Jay plugged it in and it tried to start up, but failed. So maybe it's just a bad power supply. Of course, it was a horrible, dirty mess when I got it, so I've just spent about 10 minutes cleaning it and inspecting the panel for any obvious cracks and I can't see anything so we're doing pretty well there um, which is a good start I mean if it, ha if it also had a smashed panel it'd be outside by now it's even got glass base alloy sus suspension member or whatever you want to call that uh, for a generic brand it's doing pretty damn well so yeah we'll uh, have a bit of a play with this thing and uh, get back into it or at least pull the back cover off and see what's going on inside. Uh, if it's not obviously broken, well, it might as well go outside, but I've still got that which needs a donor board. Uh, I don't know how generic that one is, but if a donor board out of this one works, well, that's good, even though the panels are bigger. And that's something I think is a problem because you've got so many vertical rows and so many horizontal rows on different size panels so the driver for this would probably be different to that one even if they're the same manufacturer. Uh, it's not like swapping boards on a television or something where some manufacturers use a bigger CRT but like the old Philips the power supply board that you just slot into the rack uh, would work on a number of different models and I'm talking old Philips televisions the ones where the chassis would swing down and all the uh, control cards, literally slotting cards, were often interchangeable between models. And that's not the case these days. Uh, well, the last of the CRT stuff, it was all completely one board, and the early stuff, it was all card based or vacuum tube based. But I kind of miss working on the old Philips TVs, they were very easy to fix. If you didn't swap the card, you could at least easily find the bad component and replace it. But I guess the easy part about these is they're cheap enough to just throw in the bin and start again. Which is kind of kind of a shame. So let's give this a try. Okay, well there's not much to this one. There's the digital can in there. And a nice power supply, which also looks pretty well built. The panel's a Chime Opto Electronics. Uh, V315B1. Uh, yeah. Fairly straightforward panel. Chime is pretty common, it's a Taiwanese brand I believe. We're used to injection mould Chime made uh, ABS plastic acrylonitrile butadiene styrene material. And Chime is a major producer of LCD plastic and chemicals. So, makes sense. Now, I did put power to it before and the LED goes red in standby and you press one of the channel buttons to bring it up and it just starts flashing green and the panel doesn't even att attempt to light the back lights. So I'm going to lift the power supply out which does look reasonably well soldered. It's not really brittle looking solder but I'll go over all that too. Uh, but I've got a feeling it's going to be either bad capacitors or maybe even something in the uh, panel backlight board. But off memory these backlight the drivers are pretty well built, so I'm hesitant to say that that'll be the problem. I bet you it's this power supply. So we'll get into that one. Might look into this failing that, but overall the set hasn't been rained on as such. It's just had a bit of uh, ambient moisture get to it. Like the, the tin can on this isn't rusted, but the backing panels for the input sockets are very rusted. 
and likewise a bit of surface rust, that sort of stuff. So unlike these ones which have been rained on, this one hasn't. So this is a bit of a gem out of the whole lot. Everything else apart from the uh, other one that Jay had for a while is pretty much scrap. So we use them for autopsy and then target practice or something like that. Maybe a microwave oven transformer versus LCD panel. We'll try it. Won't be as spectacular as a plasma, but we'll try it. Okay, well the power supply looks physically good. Not seeing any blown out capacitors or anything like that. Uh, it's just going to be a case of uh, plugging it in and doing a voltage check now. Yeah. <laughs> That's half the fun of working on LCDs. If it's not blatantly obvious, it's going to be a hell of a run around in the jungle trying to find a tiny little fault. So who knows? Free television. It has The panel's cleaned up all right, so it'd be a bit of a shame to destroy it, but... Yeah, if things get complicated, well, I'm not afraid to euthanise a half-repairable television. You've seen that in the past. Just not worth the time. Uh, decent panel, though. I'll give it that much. If it's got HDMI input, it's got to be a reasonable resolution. It's just a shame it doesn't have... I suppose it doesn't need DVI. I've been buying some uh, DVI to HDMI adapters recently, so I can... Uh, plug in through HDMI to a PC and actually use it as a decent monitor. I'm not a big fan of small monitors. The only reason I use big small ones in the shop is simply because there isn't enough wall space. Otherwise I'd have a bigger... I'll sit back further in a bigger work area and uh, have like 34 or 38 inch monitors, 40 inch monitors. Everything's better with big screens and they're so affordable now. Even the dirty cheap ones and you get a few years out of them, they're cheaper than a decent computer monitor. Okay, resolution's not so good and the, refre the um, pixel response time's not so good, but uh, who cares? Big screen. Okay, not too hard to find the problem with this one. 12 volts dips down to 10 volts immediately. Uh, even unplugged, it's still about 10.4. So I'm thinking the 12 volt regulator or anything associated with it's failed. And the repair should be pretty straightforward because I can trace all that back and there'll be a reg, I think up in there, one of these two here, bolted to the heat sink. So not a hard fix, I just got to uh, start replacing parts and it should make a good set because everything else is working. 24 volts to backlight, 5 volts standby is fine. It's just not getting the command to start the backlight because the digital board is not getting 12 volts or 12.4 or whatever it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, not hard. It's like that little portable air conditioner. Again, it was lighting up, all the LEDs lit up, but it wasn't doing anything because it was only getting about 3.6 volts instead of 5. And again, it was just a failed TO220 package uh, 5 volt regulator. Replace that, it worked. Okay, well, I know what has to be done now. I'm definitely not getting 12 volts out of this. It's dipping to 10 volts at the most even unloaded it just doesn't do it so I'm going to uh, rebuild the 12 volt output on this one uh, I'll do caps and things anyway I'll check them with the ESR meter but there's some cheapo nasty ones on there uh, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it's just one of the, one or two of them that's pulling it down but I'll also uh, check the 12 volt regulator they're not a hard item to find either used or new I could probably buy a 10 pack for like 4 95 off eBay anyway, so might as well buy a few, few to put in stock. Same with 5 volts. I've replaced a few 5 volt regs over the last few months. So, yeah, stock up again. Keep buying new components. <laughs> Got plenty of new capacitors and things, so I can recap all of this. And uh, yeah, the panel looks good. It's not waterlogged or anything like that. Uh, it's mostly just ambient air moisture that's gotten to it. Uh, been out in someone's workshop, woodworking shop evidently, because it was covered in sawdust, full of sawdust. But it's, uh, yeah, savable. The rest of them can live outside because they've already been rained on, they've got smashed panels, and are generally unserviceable. So, yep, the TCL 32-inch will live. I guarantee it. If not, I'll finish it off in spectacular fashion. <laughs> Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.